The other, the other thing I, I think that, that's important to know before we dive into this stuff, that's just a skill that you have to have as a successful network marketer, is mastering the art of storytelling. Yes. All the top marketers that I know of are master storytellers. These people can captivate an audience with stories, and they're so good at it because the human brain thinks in pictures. It thinks in stories. This is something that was instilled in us at a young, young age, and it's every, you guys notice that all of our favorite entertainment movies are all stories, yep. right? Almost magazines, books, our favorite everything is stories. Advertising, the best advertising, stories. Yes. This is a big thing to Facts tell, but stories sell. Facts only tell, but stories sell. When you were a little kid, did your parents tell you bedtime facts or bedtime stories? You know what I mean? When you were little, your parents were like, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack was five foot eight. Jill was five foot three. <laughs> Jack fell down and broke his crown, which was his cranium. And, you know what I mean? This isn't how, how it happened. You know I mean? There's stories. <laughs> Everything in, in our stories. The best advertising, right? Story. You guys remember like the, uh, the Pacific Bell commercial? The person like calls his mom. The mom's like crying, and by the end of it, like you're crying. Like, oh, it's like a 30 second commercial where it's like, I mean, these companies spend billions of dollars on figuring out how our brains work. Yep. But the average network marketer never spends two seconds on it. Think about it. You guys you know that Santa Claus wears what colors? Red right. and white. Coca Cola is what colors? Red and white. You guys notice that you, Coke sales go through the roof in wintertime. What, does, what on earth does a polar bear? have to do with Coca-Cola soda pop? <laughs> Nothing at all. But it sells more Coke, doesn't it? Yep. I mean, it does, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> You'd agree, wouldn't you? Yeah. Think about it. Big Macs, right? <laughs> Big Mac is, I mean, it's a hamburger. I don't personally eat at McDonald's, but if we were going to tell facts about McDonald's food, here would be a, a commercial for it. See mom and dad driving down the road, little, little station wagon, little, little, little kids in the back, pull up behind a big truck full of cows. Little girl in the back, daddy, look at the moo moos. Oh, let's follow it. All right, drive in, it pulls into a nice little farm. Butcher walks out with just <laughs> big slabs of meat on his hand, fresh off the carcass, McDonald's. I'm loving it, right? Like, isn't that a fact? Didn't a cow have to die for you to eat a burger? Yeah. Isn't that true? That's a fact. Cows. Multiple cows. Multiple cows. But if they did that, how many hamburgers are they going to sell? Mm. None. And you guys know the commercial that I had growing up with Larry Bird and Michael Jordan playing basketball. All right, it was off the building, off the blimp, off the backboard, nothing but net. What on earth does that have to do with hamburgers? <laughs> Nothing. But do they sell a lot of hamburgers? Yeah. Yes. They're stories. These are the things right here. Coca-Cola, if you think about it, right? And we're gonna have facts, right? How many of you guys were in, you were in high school, did a little test where you could like take the, the, the copper off the pennies, like the rust off the pennies and stuff with Coca-Cola? Yeah. Here's the, here's the commercial for Coca-Cola. You know, doctor with his little white lab doctor coat on, his little pocket protector with pins stuffed to the max. It's like, watch the acid eat the nail. Coke, it's the real thing. <laughs> this, this is what it does to your insides, right? How much Coke would they sell? None. But instead, how many of you guys remember this song from back in the day? If I could teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. That's the spirit. I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. Yes, see? When was the last time that commercial was on? Most of us weren't even born when that thing was on. And you still know it. Here, here's one thing I want you guys to get. Here's how good of a storyteller he is. He's telling you a story about storytelling. And most of you don't know it. When he told the story, he's telling a story about a commercial that doesn't exist. Facts. And what did he do? The guy in the little trench coat, pocket protector thing? 
Do you guys get that? You're involved in the story. You're sold on his story right now. Because he's telling you a story about storytelling. All of this is like, we're, we are doing to you what we do <laughs> right now that works. Are you guys getting it? Does that make sense? It does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. And this is what makes an impact that stays with somebody long term. If you notice, when Jesus spoke all the time, he spoke in what? Parables. Those are just stories. Yep. He could have said to the disciples, hey man, you're going to go share this gospel thing, and some people are going to be into it, and some people aren't. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of the whole story. Or instead, he tells the whole story of, there's this sower, and he's got these seeds. And he starts, you know, doing what sowers do, and he starts spreading the seed around. And some of the seed falls on this path where the birds come in and get them. But rather than trying to chase birds and fight birds, he just keeps doing what the sower does, and he sows more seed. And some of it falls on this ground where it's shallow, and on the first hot day it withers and dies. Some of it falls on this ground where there's thorns, and it starts to grab root and starts to grow, but the thorns choke it to death. Right? And then some of it falls on good soil. And the promise that he makes to his disciples is the seed always falls on good soil if you keep sowing the seed. But even the good soil, some of it produces 30%, some of it produces 60%, and some of it produces 100%. Now, why the difference in numbers? I don't know. I'm not God. All we know is it just keeps happening. <laughs> so he tells that story. Now, all of us have probably heard that story at some point, and it sticks with us so much so in a way that we don't get discouraged when we're sowing seeds. Mm -hmm. But if he would have just... Here's the facts, bro. Here's the facts. Some people are in, some people aren't. I mean, even the ones that are in, some of them do pretty good and some of them don't. I mean, you'd probably forget that by the time you left the room. But the story stays with you so much longer. The best training, the best trainers, the best people that help somebody experience a breakthrough are able to do it in a way where they can paint a picture in someone's mind. So much of my coaching, when I'm helping somebody go through coaching, whatever else, I'll put it in a story from. If you want to be really great at this business, master being a great storyteller and relating whatever this person needs to hear, whether it's a sale, whether it's a coaching, whether it's moving forward through something, into a story that they can relate with and apply to their life. 